This video is not immigration advice. I repeat, this video has nothing to do with immigration. One more time, this video is not about immigration. All right, let's begin. Being an immigration consultant, I often have clients interested in moving to Europe, and I always recommend the Balkans. Used to be called the powder keg of Europe, the Balkan Peninsula is now one of the most peaceful regions in the world and offers a variety of immigration choices for digital nomads, entrepreneurs, investors, and retirees. Immigration to most Balkan nations is very easy, and since many of these countries are likely to join the European Union in the future, it means having a foothold in the region will most definitely be beneficial in the long run. So far, I have made two videos on passports from countries in the Balkans. One of them was Croatia, which is now a full member of the EU, and its passport can not only grant you the right to live anywhere in Europe, but can also bring you to the United States without a visa. If you haven't seen that video yet, now's your chance. The other one is Bosnia. The country has a high probability of joining the EU in the coming years, and its passport already enjoys visa-free travel in Europe, Russia, and China. Again, I've already done a video on the Bosnian passport. Go back to that if you want more details. On top of that, it's relatively easy to move to the Balkans. You can get a residency permit in a lot of the countries by simply buying a cheap apartment or making a small investment. I think it's fair to say that the Balkans is the gateway to Europe. But even so, a lot of people still hesitate in making the decision. To them, buying a 50,000 euro apartment to get a residency still is too big of a commitment. If you are one of those people, then you're in luck, because in this video, I'm gonna tell you that there is a way to get citizenship in one of the Balkan countries in a very short amount of time for less than $100. That's right, citizenship, not a visa, not a permit, not residency which could expire. I'm talking citizenship, meaning a passport, and the total cost from citizenship application, passport application, everything included, will be less than 100 US dollars. What's even better is that the time you need to spend on this is gonna be shorter than Kevin Hart. Depending on how fast your local postal service works, you might get your passport within one week or one month from when you submit your application. I've searched the internet and surprisingly wasn't able to find videos about this information, so I think this might be the first video of its kind on how to get citizenship in this country. Before we get into the details, remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more information like this. Now, in case you didn't know, the vast majority of countries in the Balkans today were once part of a larger country called Yugoslavia. In the 1990s, Yugoslavia gradually broke up into many smaller countries that we all know today, such as Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Slovenia, Montenegro, and North Macedonia. The problem is, when multiple small countries emerge from a larger union, they sometimes cannot agree on the boundaries. Such is the case for the border between Croatia and Serbia. Adding to the mix is that the border is set by the Danube River, which changes its course from time to time. These factors have left both countries with numerous little pockets of land near the border that are in dispute. And because there are so many of these pockets, sometimes both countries will forget to claim them, making them terra nullius, which is Latin for nobody's land. And when a piece of land becomes nobody's land, it's out there for everybody. In 2015, Czech politician Vít Jedlíška Jed made a claim on a 7 square kilometer pocket west to the river and declared the formation of a new country called Liberland, at the same time naming himself the head of state. Despite being shunned by both Serbia and Croatia as illegitimate and a publicity stunt, neither of them is willing to take responsibility for this pocket, making Liberland at least not illegal. 
the new country has seemingly attracted international attention. Besides blanket news coverage, Witt also claims that his government has received over 400,000 citizenship applications. Now, if that's true, it will make Liberland the most densely populated region in the world, beating the current record holder Macau. Speaking of Macau, its passport is pretty fascinating. I have a video on that if you're interested. But 400,000 is too large a number to believe. I suspect it's the number of inquiries instead of actual applications. Anyway, although the intrigue is obviously there, so far I haven't seen any ordinary Liberland passports. All of the Liberland passports I could find were diplomatic ones, for some reason. The application fee is 10,000 US dollars, pretty expensive for a country that's not recognized by any other country. Plus, the Croatian police has been blocking access to that plot of land ever since Liberland went viral. Even Witt himself was detained a couple of times when he was trying to get in there. The legal basis for Liberland's claim is that some of the pockets are not claimed by either Croatia or Serbia. That is true. In fact, the pocket on which Liberland stands is an international football. When asked, Serbia says the land belongs to Croatia, and Croatia says it belongs to Serbia. Legally speaking, the terra nullius argument is pretty sound. Not legal advice though. However, whether a new country can be formed ultimately depends on whether there are permanent residents living there and have effective control over the territory. Currently, no one can even go to Liberland without getting an approval from either Croatia or Serbia, so that's out of the window. Don't worry, this video is not about Liberland. After all, 10,000 US dollars for citizenship is too much, and the whole thing seems like a giant scam. But credit to where it's due, Liberland did inspire others to set up their own micronations in the surrounding area, bringing us more free entertainment, which is always welcomed. One of these new micronations is the Free Republic of Verdes, founded by Australian teenager Daniel Jackson in 2019. Daniel is claiming the land of Pocket 3, south of Liberland, right here, to be the territorial area of Verdes. The problem is, that pocket has already been claimed by another unrecognized country called the State of Humanitaria in 2015. However, Daniel says the claim has been inactive, so his claim should come first. Let them fight. Anyway, the reason I bring up Verdes instead of a dozen other so-called countries is that it is the only one from which you can easily get citizenship and a passport. If you go on to the Verdes government website, which looks so crappy that it actually resembles a real government website, you can apply for this citizenship. Daniel charges 16 US dollars for citizenship application and 80 dollars for passport if you want one. From what I heard, citizenship used to be free and the passport used to only cost 50, but he raised the prices due to the high volume of applications. So there you go, for a total of $96, you too can have citizenship and a passport from a country located in Europe. Whether that country is recognized internationally is a different matter. Hey, didn't I tell you at the beginning of the video that this is not about immigration? Before you call the Verdi's passport a fake passport, I will urge you to choose your words very carefully. A fake passport indicates it's trying to be something other than itself, which it's not. The Verdi's passport is exactly what it says it is. You could say the country doesn't really exist, but the passport is not a fake. As far as the Verdi's government is concerned, these are legitimate travel documents, which are completely legal to have. Of course, governments of other countries might not consider the passport to be a valid travel document, but that's just their opinion. This brings us to the concept of fantasy passports and camouflage passports. A fantasy passport is a document with the name of a country that doesn't exist. During one of my older episodes, I brought up the Iroquois passport. That one could be seen as a fantasy passport since no country on earth considers the Iroquois people to be a sovereign nation. Camouflage passports are similar, but instead of donning the names of fantasy countries, they use the old names of countries that used to exist. The European Commission actually has a non-exhaustive list of fantasy passports and camouflage passports. Unfortunately, Verdes wasn't famous enough to make it to the list. I think Daniel has a lot of work to do. 
The point is, holding and selling a fantasy or camouflage passport like the Verdi's passport is not illegal. So I think it's safe to say that the Verdi's citizenship, and by extension, the passport, is not only legit; it's also the easiest. Fastest and cheapest European identity you can get for just under 100 bucks. Not immigration advice. Personally, I wouldn't get this passport. Not even for fun. 96 dollars is way too expensive for a document that you cannot use. By the way, I offer a part of my passport collection for sale. These are authentic vintage passports from real countries, and they usually go for only 30 bucks. Check them out if you're interested. Link in the description. And if you want to move to a real country such as Canada, become a patron, become a member, book a private session with me. I'll see you there. Peace.